trucks the best selling trucks 33 straight years by just for men for mustache and beard keep your edge and by skyline chili we had a little bit tonight you know it's skyline time when you get that craving for a skyline three-way or cheese tone well, the reds are taking the field Set to open his three-game series against the Mets, who come in on a pretty good roll. Yes, they've lost their last two, but prior to that, they had ripped off eight straight wins. They're three over overall, 14 up, 11 down. And, Chris, they've done it primarily the entire year with very good pitching. Even when they were losing games, they were pitching well. Well, they do have a pretty good starting rotation, and the Reds are fortunate enough that they're going to miss their top two guys in the rotation, Johan Santana and Mike Pelfrey. But they're second in the least in the Eastern Division, as you see right there, and they've got a real good earned run average overall. This is the team, though, that has made most of their hay and best wins at home. They're only 3-6 and six when they get away from City Field in New York, so they're really untested when it comes on the road so far. This just might be a good time for the Reds to play this Jerry Manuel Mets team. And let's take a look at Jerry's starting lineup tonight for the opener of this series against Mike Leake. It'll be on El Pagan leading off in center field. Luis Castillo at second. Jose Reyes healthy again and playing short. Jason Bay signed a big deal as a free agent during the winter. The clean up hitter and left. David Wright at third and Ike Davis a rookie at first. A latter third of the former Brave Jeff Francoeur. Rod Barajas red hot right now at three home runs over the weekend in Philly. And Oliver Perez is on the mound. Mike Leake, 22 years old, grew up in San Diego, California. Well, the good thing about being brand new for Mike Leake is he doesn't know that the Mets have come in here and won eight of the last 13 ball games against this Reds team. He'll just use his natural stuff, like a sinking fastball. He works very fast. Watch how he gets the ball back from the catcher, and he is towing that rubber ready to go, and he hits his spots, and that is the number one thing that Mike Leake does that made him stand out in spring training and continues to separate himself from a lot of other pitchers in this league. On Hel Pagan to lead things off, a 244 batter, a home run, and 10 runs batted in. When Leak has had problems, and they have not been frequently, when you have a 2 0 record and a 3.2 ERA, as their strike one in this game is underway, his problems have occurred in the opening inning. If he is able to get through the first inning unscathed, he has been lights out. There is a fly ball right to Johnny Gomes. And moving from shade to sun, he's able to handle it one away. Take a look at the Reds defensively, presented by Ford. They'll go with Stubbs in center, flanked by Gomes. And Chris Heisey, who makes his major league debut here tonight, he starts in place of Jay Bruce. Roland Cabrera, Phillips and Votto along the infield. Leak and Hernandez, the Reds' battery. Luis Castillo, the second baseman, looks at his strike. A lot of versatility in this Mets lineup. Three switch hitters to get it going. There's a base hit in the center field, and Castillo is a one-out base runner. Boy, he's been doing that for years. Well, here's what we talked about, Chris, in the first inning. An ERA at nine. And opponents hitting better than 465. Yeah, you know, look at this, though, and think about it. Even from a mathematical standpoint, you're skewed right from the very beginning. Because if you give up one run in the first inning, your earned run average is nine. You give up one run in the second inning and shut them out the rest of the way, your earned run average is really low. So, you know, my, yes, like every other pitcher, get them early if you're going to get them. Mike Leak is just like everybody else. You get into a rhythm, you get into a groove, you find your release point, and it's a lot easier to get guys out. Jose Reyes, after missing nearly all of last year, was diagnosed with a thyroid condition during spring training, did not play in a single spring training game, and then joined the club a little more than a week into the season, was back in his customary leadoff spot. And then about a week and a half ago, Jerry Manuel moved him into the three-hole. And while he's not taken off like they know he will, hope he will, it has certainly helped Jason Bay who has swung a much better bat since Reyes was moved to hit in front of him. One ball and two strikes to Reyes. One on, one out, one and two to the New York shortstop. 
that's just off the inside corner. Or you can just see how Mike Leak is working a little bit slow stuff on the outside. You zip one inside, get him off the dish a little bit, and most likely go back out. Reyes right now being very anxious, swinging at things he doesn't normally swing at, trying to find himself a groove. Line to Votto, and that'll be an ending, ending double play. So Reyes fires the helmet away in frustration, hit it right on the nose. A scoreless first for the Mets, and the Reds are coming up. Bruce Tubbs in center, Brandon Phillips in second, Joey Votto at first. Scott Rowland at third, Johnny Gomes in left, and Orlando Cabrera the shortstop. A latter third of Chris Heisey. See his numbers after a dreadful start at Louisville. It started to take off, and now he makes his big league debut tonight. Ramon Hernandez bats eighth and catches, and Mike Leake is on the mound. And starting at four, the Mets. A familiar foe during his tenure with the Pirates is left-hander Oliver Perez. Well, they ought to be a familiar foe. He started pitching against the Reds back in 2004. That was against Aaron Harang in his first ever game against the Reds. He's lost a little bit on the fastball, though. He used to be a guy that would come out here throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. He's throwing way more breaking balls, curveballs, and change-ups than he's ever has before. But despite all that, he has fashioned himself to a nine-win, five-loss career record against this Red Legs team. Hard to believe Perez, just 28 years old, as he delivers a fastball strike. It really is. I mean, it seems like the guy's been around forever, but he was originally signed by the Padres when he was 16 years old. And really, the M.O. on Perez is pretty cut and dry. He's very tough to hit. When he throws strikes, he'll rack up huge strikeout numbers. But he is one of the wildest pitchers as far as walks per nine innings is concerned among all pitchers over the last seven, eight years. There are nights when he's unhittable. And there are other nights when he's already back in a clubhouse in the third inning. Yeah, I think I was looking earlier today, Tom, that I think of the first seven games he pitched against the Reds, five of those games he had double-digit strikeouts. That's pretty good. But there are other games when he'll go out and walk six or seven in seven innings. High fly ball in a deep left center field by Stubbs, and the Reds are off and running. It's a 1 0 game. Well, Perez got ahead of him in the count, and that's one of the breaking balls we were talking about. You know, what's really going in favor of the Reds tonight is that they just tried to negotiate. The offerings of Chris Carpenter yesterday and Kyle Loesch the day before. Those two guys were really on their game, and the ball must have looked very small to them. Today, coming out of the hand of Oliver Perez, not quite so small. First leadoff home run of the year for the Reds. Stubbs was the last guy to do it in September of last season. Number two in this young season for Drew Stubbs, and here's Brandon Phillips ahead in the count, 1 0. Back up through the middle. Castillo able to cut it loose, but uh, he still plays a nice second base. Maybe not the range that he used to have, but still a pretty dependable fielder out there at second. New York defensively presented by Ford tonight. Jason Day in left on Hell Pagan in center. They're still without Carlos Beltran. I don't know when they're getting him back. Francoeur and Wright. Reyes and Castillo up the middle. David Wright and Ike Davis, a rookie on the corners. Perez and Barajas, the batter. Perez trying to come back from knee surgery last year. Was on the 15 day disabled list twice during the season. Once in early May, was activated in early July, then went back on the DL. In late August, with the same bothersome knee, and finally had to get that fixed. A three and four record, only pitched in 14 games, had won 10 games the year before, and 15 games in 2007. That earned in that monster contract, of which he's paid a pile of dough this year and even more next year. Two and one to Joey Votto. Well, it seems like Perez has been around forever, Tom, and he's only, what, 29 years old because he was signed when he was 16 by the Padres, but he made his Major League debut at age 20. 
Remember that Mike Leake, even though he hasn't pitched in the minor leagues, is 22 years old. Three and two now to Joe. 287 batter, four home runs. And 13 runs batted in. Uh -huh. On the road trip, six out of 21. Remember, there was always a lot of controversy about Perez, whether the Padres would give him up, and they were in need of some offense. So they, they got Brian Giles in exchange for Oliver Perez when he went through the Pirates. That was in 2003. See the numbers for Oliver by far the most wins in his career than against any other team has come against the Reds with nine wins. That one fouled away. Good piece of hitting there by Votto. Three and two to count on Votto. A leadoff home run in the game by Drew Stubbs, and the Reds lead one nothing. And another foul ball back out of play. Baseball Hall of Famer Sandy Koufax, who is very good friends with the Mets owner Fred Wilpon. Was brought into Mets spring training this year primarily to work a lot with Oliver Perez. Full foul. I mean, Sandy was right there with him from the very beginning of spring training. Everything from long tossing to throwing in the bullpen, making subtle suggestions and offering encouragement. He talked to Perez 20 minutes at the end of every workout. A lot of people forget Sandy Koufax struggled as a young man. He nearly quit after the 1960 season when he went 8 and 13. Walked 100 batters that year in 175 innings. Here's ball four to bottom. So some of the struggles as a young man, Koufax was trying to share with Perez. And really didn't get into a lot of mechanical stuff. I was surprised reading the article where Sandy Koufax thought that people are paying way too much attention to a pitcher's delivery. Sandy Koufax believes Chris that pitching is precision throwing and said sometimes delivery is overrated. Do you understand what he means by oh, that? I know exactly what he means, Tom, because I can tell you firsthand experience. I used to write a, a newsletter on pitching and went down one year when Sandy Koufax was the pitching coach for the Texas Rangers. Went down to Port Charlotte to do an interview with him. And when I brought up the subject of mechanics, he said, oh, hold on right there. I don't want to talk about mechanics at all. I don't want to give advice that somebody's going to read that may not apply to them and their particular delivery or style. So, yeah, I think it's more of a mental thing, and uh, especially from the standpoint of being able to throw strikes when you need to. On the ground, this will be an inning-ending double play. Reds had a lot of those over the weekend at St. Louis. But they get on the board first. First leadoff home run this season by a Red. It comes off the bat of serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Chris started to talk about the Mets and the difference between how they play at home as opposed to on the road. Look at those numbers. They'll come right back to that strike one to David Royal, Jason Bay. Well, they've only played nine games on the road, so they really have been untested. They played three games in Philadelphia. They got beat last night and in a game in which they really can't afford to be beat. When they score five runs and have Johan Santana on the mound, they shouldn't lose those games. They did last night. He had a very un-Santana-like game last night. They also lost the day before to Roy Halliday. So you lose two out of three of the Phillies, that's no big deal, but that is their arch rival in the Eastern Division. They're trying to set a little bit of a pace right there. One and two to Jason Bay among the newest Mets this season. Finished the end of last year, of course, with the Boston Red Sox. And then signed that whopping four-year deal for nearly $67 million. Roland going to be a do-or-die play. Bare hands throws and got him. Does it get any better than that? Scotty Roland. Well, if you're a sinker ball pitcher, that guy is your best friend at third base. How about this play by Scott Rowland? Bare hand and put something on that throw, too. Jason Bay boot scooting it down the line.
Why not smile about that play, young man? One away for David Wright. 274 batter, five home runs, and 19 driven in. And looks at a first pitch strike. Look at him keep his eyes on the ball right there. He grabs it with almost a three or four finger grip. And then while he's bringing that ball up to get it behind his ear to throw, that's when he finds, you know, the grip with two fingers and is able to put something on it. You don't do that just by rolling out of bed. You work on that. Breaking ball and an 0 2 pitch just off the outside edge. Kind of have it in your hand first, and then you try to find the grip. Hmm. I can watch that play all night. Because you make a good pitch right there. From a pitcher's standpoint, you make a great pitch. A guy dribbles it in front of the third baseman, and if it goes for a base hit, you think, man, I made a good pitch and I didn't get a reward. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball away from David Wright. First strike out of the night for Mr. Lee. Now not a bad place to stay is away from Wright. He is hot. He had a three-run home run last night. He's a great high ball hitter. You get ahead of him, though, he'll chase it. So two up, two down. The New York second inning. The Reds in front, one nothing. And here's the rookie, Ike Davis. A teammate of Mike Leake when both played at Arizona State University two years ago. And Davis, the son of former big league pitcher Ron Davis, a former teammate of yours, Mr. Will. Yeah. Ron and I played double A ball while we were at the New York Yankees together. He went on to have a sensational major league career over about 11 seasons as a closer for the Twins. As a setup guy for Goose Gossage and the Yankees in the late 80s or late 70s and early 80s. Good looking hitter, this young man. Mm -hmm. well, he has been on every team's radar going back to the days when he was playing high school baseball for one of the real high school powerhouse teams in America, Scottsdale Chaparral High School. 6'4, 230 pounds. A number one pick two years ago after his junior year with the Sun Devils. He'll be 23 years old this month. The other way hit well. Johnny Gomes into the corner. And that is a foul ball. Yeah, it's interesting to talk to Ike before the ball game about, you know, his relationship with Mike Leake, what they did. It was kind of interesting that, that they would, he would bring, the coach of the Arizona State, that is, uh, Pat Murphy would bring Davis in to relieve Leake and put Leake over at first base where Davis to start the game. Davis got a kick out of it. Leak got a kick out of it. You know they're having a special time right now facing each other just a couple of years after being teammates at Arizona State. A lot of people felt like Davis could have been drafted as either a hitter or a pitcher. Uh, he was a dominant high school pitcher. And as Chris just mentioned, good enough to be pitching regularly on one of the powerhouse programs collegiately. Lined in the center field. And it's over the head of Stubbs. And Davis will coast into second base with two outs in the inning. We'll see how it's scored. It'll be an error. Well, an error all the way right here. The ball was really hit hard. It just did, and I don't know, maybe it was knuckling it still at that point out there. That ball was absolutely smoked like a low one iron right there, but Drew Stubbs should have had it. So Davis at second, two away, and here comes Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur at 264, four home runs and 13 runs batted in. Francoeur just three hits in his last 17 at bats. But a base hit there by a diving Cabrera. And the run will score to tie the game. So the two out error by Stubbs opens the door for the hit by Fran Cooler. I'll tell you, both these last two hitters that Mike Leake has faced have shown themselves to be very good low ball hitters. Look where that pitch is. Down below the knees around shin high. And he laces it right by the shortstop. That ball that Ike Davis hit was a low pitch.
So the inning continues now for the number eight hitter. Rod Barajas already six home runs this year for Barajas. He's a hacker. He had three of them over the weekend against his former team Philadelphia. Two of them off the foul pole. There's strike one. One of those guys like the Reds Ryan Hannigan, who was signed at a tryout camp in Barajas' case with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Wound up making his way to the big leagues with that club and has bounced around since. In the air, left center field, and Stubbs has it to end the inning. A big air, one hit, leads to a run. And we're tied at one. White center during our game tonight. Christy Shannon of Franklin, Ohio, will win that beautiful new Tundra on display here at Great American Ballpark. You can register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. So a 1 1 game as the Reds come to bat in the bottom of the second inning. Drew Stubbs led off the game with a home run. But then his error allowed the Mets to score in the top of the second. So it'll be Johnny Gomes, Orlando Cabrera, and then Chris Heisey will make his major league debut. Ball one to Johnny. Just got underneath this one and foul ground. It'll be Ray as a shortstop calling off his buddy David Wright and Gomes retired. One away. Well, of course, the Mets in town the beginning of the weekend in the weekend showdown with the Cubbies Friday, Saturday, and Sunday presented by Cincinnati Bell. And we encourage you to wear red in support of the hometown Red Lakes. Get tickets now by calling 513 381 Reds. Or visit Reds.com. Looking forward to the Cubbies coming back into town. Already their second visit of the year. They were here, of course, the opening weekend when the Reds beat them two out of three. Mike Leak winning the final game of that series. Actually got a no decision personally, but he was on the mound when the Reds won that game. Strike one to Orlando Cabrera. That's into center field, a one out single for the red shortstop. So now we get a look at young Mr. Heisen. 25 years old, was the red 17th round draft pick in June 2006. Graduated from Donegal High School in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. Then attended Messiah College in Granham, Pennsylvania. Played on the baseball team there. Obviously a standout player and has been very, very good coming up through the Reds minor league system. In fact, he was among the top players during the Arizona Fall League this winter. Last year, the Reds minor league player of the year. The Sheldon Chief Bender Award winner. At 35 doubles, 22 home runs. 21 stolen bases and knocked in 77 between Double A Carolina and Triple A Louisville. Nice kid too. The Reds have seen over the last few years the draft just good quality people, and he is as hard a worker as you'll ever see. Because when you're drafted in the 17th round, you've got to make a name for yourself, and you've got to do it right now. One and one to Heisey, and it's his first major league at bat and fooled badly on that pitch down and in, and he's behind one and two. Interestingly enough, why while Chris Heisey up, is up here making his debut against the New York Mets, the AAA Louisville Bats are in Buffalo playing the AAA team of the New York Mets. Cabrera short lead at first, held on by Davis. One and two to Heisey. And a swing and a miss, and he's gone on strikes. First of the night for Perez. Two away in the inning. 
Well, now Ramon Hernandez at 244, four runs batted in. Ramon only had five at bats on the road trip. Ryan Hannigan had double that number. And on the trip in 10 at bats, Hannigan knocked in three runs. And Hannigan beginning to get more and more playing time. I mean, Dusty Baker's not coming out and saying that, you know, it's a straight split down the middle. Although clearly more and more playing time has gone in Hannigan's favor. He's swinging a hot bat. One game, one one count. Two out with the runner at first here in the red second inning, and unable to find the ball is Rod Barajas, and Cabrera will easily advance 90 feet. That'll be a wild pitch on Perez. Yeah, that's one of those situations where the, the batter at the plate, Hernandez, told him to go because at the, from first base, Orlando Cabrera couldn't tell where the ball was. He wasn't sure whether the catcher caught it, trapped it. It was what it stayed at his feet, and so you see Ramon Hernandez waving Orlando, get on over there. So now an RBI chance for Hernandez, count in his favor at two balls and a strike. And a lot of room on that right side between Davis and Castillo. Three and one. Mike Leak would be next. And Leak in his first 10 major league at bats already has four base hits. Shakespeare, are you? That sounds like what? Taming of the Shrew? Sounds like that. I have never ceased to be impressed. All of your quotations before the game as you were getting ready, you always like to bone <laughs> up on your Shakespeare. That one sort of rubbed off on me. So I'm thank you. Thank you. We have a few more. <laughs> All right, here's Leak. Four hits in his first ten big league at bats, as we mentioned. He's looking for his first run batted in and a golden chance for it right here. A runner out at second base with two away in a 1-1 game. And even when Leak has been retired, he is no easy out. Appears to have a very good eye of the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Just a confident kid, not a cocky kid, not an arrogant kid by any stretch of the imagination. Very grounded, extremely likable, but certainly confident, no matter what it is he's trying to do. Two on, two out. Two balls and a strike on Mike Leak. 
Foul away again, leaving a count. I'll tell you what, that last pitch at 91 miles an hour, a little more on the fastball than we were told that Oliver Perez would have. I mean, there was a time early in his career he would come out here in a Pittsburgh Pirates uniform or a San Diego Padres uniform, chucking it up there at 94, 95. We thought tonight he'd be somewhere around 86 to 88, but he's feeling good tonight. Two on, two out, two balls and two strikes. And a breaking ball that Leak does not chase to run the count full. Now that's key right there because you're going to have the runners off and running on a 3 2 count. And since they're not holding the first baseman, or the first baseman's not holding Hernandez on at all, he can get a huge lead out there. All right, three and two on Leak. And here it comes. Bouncing ball deep in the hole at short. Reyes cuts it loose, hitting over. A hit, a walk, two men left. We move to the third at Great American Ballpark, and we're tied at one. All up here, and now, you know, getting a chance to start. I mean, about a week ago, I never could have told me, and I would have said, you know, not yet, you know, maybe later in the year, but I'm just pumped up. Pumped up indeed. Our Geico direct quote from Chris Heisey. Playing in a major league game for the very first time in his life. Congratulations, young man. How can you not be pumped up? Oh, I mean, yeah. that's just the way it is. He's got butterflies up there. He's got his first A.B. out of the way. Don't worry about it. You'll get some more. Oliver Perez to lead things off against Mike Leake in a 1-1 game. Well, you may not know it by that swing, but you saw that note down at the bottom in his career. Perez has done some damage not only on the mound, but at the plate against the red. Yeah, he can swing the bat a little bit. Just dropped the bat, bat head on that baby right there, but pulls it foul out of play. Still nothing in two. Last year, a nightmare season for the Mets. They had so many injuries. I mean, they were without question, as far as the big boys are concerned, their most important players on the team. They were wrecked by injuries more than any other club. Whether you're talking about Jose Reyes, Carlos Delgado, Carlos Beltran, right on down the line. It was a rough go. They moved into a new ballpark. They were the only team in the major leagues that didn't even hit 100 home runs. Not even 100. But they're hoping with the return of Reyes, a turnaround year for David Wright, the addition of Jason Bay, Jeff Francoeur for a full year. And now that Ike Davis has taken over at first, they're hoping that things will get turned around and they come in three games over 500. Still one and two on Oliver Perez. They didn't do a lot of things most people thought they would do during the offseason, primarily go out and bring in a a big time starting pitcher really to join Johan Santana at the top of the rotation there's strike three called to Perez now they had an eye on John Lackey they flirted a little bit with Jason Marquis but didn't feel like any of those guys were worth the money they wound up getting especially Lackey he signed that monster deal to go to Boston Two strikeouts in the game for Leak, and now Pagan. Breaking ball is in there, a strike. Pagan flied out to Johnny Gomes, leading off the game. Light schedule tonight, especially in the National League. There's only three other games besides this one, and undoubtedly the marquee matchup has division leaders colliding in Philadelphia. The Cardinals and the Phillies starting a four-game series. Cardinals out to an early one-nothing lead that game in the third. Arizona will be in Houston, and Colorado plays in San Diego. And how about the Padres? They just keep on rolling. 
16 and 9 on the year. The second best winning percentage among all National League teams. Second only to St. Louis. Into the corner. This will be extra bases for Pagan. And he's in with a one out double. Not really sure what Mike League wanted to do with that particular pitch. It looked like an off speed pitch. Hernandez set up way inside. And he just kind of left that slider out over the plate. Simple as that. So now Castillo singled into center field his first time up. This game tied at one. We're in the top of the third inning with one out. Change up. That's a pitch you'd expect out of a more veteran pitcher every time because that 2 0 count is a fastball for most everybody else out there. 2 and 1 on Castillo, and that one dribbled foul to even things up. So Leak has come back after falling behind 2 and 0 to even things at 2 and 2. Well, they obviously want to crowd Luis Castillo with the ball. He kind of slapped it up the middle his last time to get a base hit. He's got the kind of swing where he's almost running out of the batter's box the same time he swings. Now they'll go away. And a nice play there by Ramon Hernandez on that pitch that came back into the batter. And he snatches it out of the dirt, preventing Pagan from advancing. Three and two on Castillo. The go ahead run at second with one out. And pulled to the right side. Votto will wave off league. Pagan on to third, and there are two outs in the inning. Let's take a look at the National League Central Division and how they stack up. Presented by Honda. The Cardinals beating the Reds two out of three over the weekend. The Cubs rally to win three straight over Arizona, moving to 500. And the Reds one game under. Well, Milwaukee went out to San Diego talking about the Padres. San Diego shut them out in back-to-back -back games on Friday and Saturday of that weekend. Milwaukee generally is a team that can swing the bat. Well, they were really swinging the bat the previous series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. They scored so many runs and so many hits, maybe their arms got tired. Really, it's one of those stats that when you look at the Brewers, it's a bit misleading. They've had two games this year. Where they have scored 37 runs mm -hmm. against Pittsburgh. So when you look at total runs scored in the league, I mean, they're right in the top two or three. But you look at all the rest of their games, and they wouldn't be anywhere close to that. As Reyes fouls it off his foot, it looked like. And he's in some pain. Now, this young man's had all sorts of problems over the last few years trying to stay healthy, stay on the field. Had knee injuries, you alluded earlier. Boy, that's right off the knee. You don't see that very often. Usually the ball goes off the foot. The inside of the knee right there, that has really got to be barking. Reyes along with Carlos Beltran both were in the headlines. And boy, when you're in the headlines in New York, you're in the headlines. When during spring training, the FBI was investigating Reyes and Beltran and their relationship with a doctor in Canada who's had ties or allegedly had ties to 
human growth hormone and steroids among athletes, not just in baseball, but many other sports. And apparently Reyes was extremely forthright. And nothing really charged or leveled against him. He acknowledged that he went up there to have some, I guess, more cutting-edge technology kind of therapy done to try and heal an injured hamstring. 3-1 delivered. And that's strike two. I'll tell you one thing, Mike Leak is keeping that ball down. Mike DeMuro, little by little, the home plate umpire is beginning to appreciate the fact that he's around the dish. Calling the low pitch, and that's a good place to live. Pay off to Ray. And it's in the air, and this should end the inning. Stubbs coming in to get it, so Leak pitches around a one-out double by Pagan to keep us tied at one after two and a half. Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers where you can register to win the Tundra here at Great American Ballpark by JTM Food Family Fun JTM. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by GMC. We are professional grade. Yeah, the river's up a little bit. I'm surprised they're still letting them park over there on the landing. We had that shot of your car almost... Slipping into the mighty Ohio last summer. I was hoping. <laughs> There's a bouncer, David Wright, and foul ground. What a play by David Wright. Scott Rowland made one earlier in the game on the red side, and now David Wright's turn for the Mets. I'll tell you what, this is a dandy right here, right down the line. Remember, the fastest of all the Reds is running the base paths right here. And a nice stretch and play on the other side by Ike Davis. Nice little five to three partnership. So now Brandon Phillips, he was robbed of the base hit on a nice play by Castillo up the middle. There's strike one from Perra. about the Mets getting lit up the last couple of games giving up 10 or more in Philadelphia first time that's happened since 2007 where they've allowed 10 or more runs in back to back games and it's interesting to note the Mets went on to lose their next three games in that 2007 year and the Reds would love for a repeat of that in this series. Well, when that Philadelphia club gets rolling on offense, wow, especially in that ballpark. I mean, you can't find two so dramatically different ballparks the way they play from an offensive standpoint than City Field in New York and then Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Citizens Bank, a lot like Great American, the ball jumps out of there, especially as it gets warmer in the summertime. The humidity, the heat, it all warms up, and you can just, the balls just jump. City Park, it doesn't matter what time of year, especially when it's cool, though. It is plays very, very large. Maybe the biggest ballpark in the league. We're close to it. That in San Diego. Yeah. Of course, there are games in San Francisco. It's mighty tough to hit there as well. Phillips, a lazy fly ball to straightaway center. And Pagan's got it to away. All right, time of night for our AT&T trivia question. Rethink possible. Who are the only two National League teams? Oh boy, we're going back to 1910. To record 108 wins or more in a season. Don't look at me. 1910. One thing we know, the Mets have not been around since 1910. But if I'm not mistaken, I mean, the, the, the Reds, I believe, are one of those teams. There's a strike on the outside point. I wonder if they would ask that question with the Mets in town. Now, well, they won the World Series in, uh, in 1986. 86. Yeah, of course, they won it in uh, 1969, the amazing Mets. 
The only two World Series titles in the franchise's history. There's a check swing and a miss. Votto is gone. We'll give you the answer when we come back. We're tied at one at the end of three. In ballpark time to answer our AT&T trivia question. We thought the Reds were one of these teams to win 108 or more in a year. They get back to the uh, Reds of 75. Well, let's see. Yeah, 75 Reds. How about that? The 86 Mets also won 108. Good job, partner. That was a good team. The uh, well, we know about the Reds in 75. I mean, they were a juggernaut. And of course, the Mets won that whole thing in 86. And man, did they have a nice club. Foul ground off the bat of Jason Day and room for Joey Votto. Two pitches run out for Mike Leake to begin the fourth inning. It's always preferable to have either the third baseman or first baseman come running in to make this catch. That ball was way up there, had a lot of backspin on it, and Joey Votto nearly overran it. Got to stop right there make sure you don't do that. It's harder for a catcher because you always see those guys ending up catching that ball while they're backing up. Ball one away to David Wright. When you think back to that 1986 Mets club, they had Lenny Dykstra playing center field. They had Wally Backman at second. Keith Hernandez was their first baseman. Gary Carter, Hall of Famer behind the plate. Daryl Strawberry hit 27 bombs that year. George Foster was in their opening day lineup in 86. Howard Johnson, now their hitting coach, a third baseman. Rafael Santana, Dwight Gooden was their opening day pitcher. They had a great rotation. Well, they had four starters that were lights out. I mean, Doc Gooden went 17 and 6. Let me guess the other ones. Hang on. All right. David Cohn yet? No. No, okay. Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. And Sid Fernandez? Yes, Sid, 16 and 6. Fly ball short left center field. And there are uh, two away in the end. Ron Darling, I think, was in that. You're location. right. Ron Darling, who's next door in the booth with us uh, up here. Was uh, Bob was, Ojeda uh, in there? Bobby Ojeda had maybe the best year of all of them. He was 18 and 5. Ron Darling that year was 15 and 6. So they really had, they had a foursome of pitchers that were outstanding. Now, the, the, the slacker in the rotation, if you can call it that, was 14 and 9, Roger McDowell, with a 3.02 earned run average. I mean, they had some serious pitching. Yeah. He was one of the best right there, Ron Darling. Great guy to watch pitch. Very, very smart. Ball one to Ike Davis. He hit that line drive right at Drew Stubbs, who misplayed it into a two base error and then the next batter Jeff Francoeur singled into left field to score Davis and tie the game at one that's where we stand two outs and nobody on into the fourth inning broken bat rolling to Brandon Phillips so this time Luke takes care of Davis and it's a perfect fourth for Mike Lee Reds come to bat. Heart of the order due up in a one this cold, hard last. Drew Stubbs leading off the game. A home run up the facing of the second deck out there in left center field. First leadoff home run by a Red this year. Mets tie the game the next half inning. And it's 1 1 as the Reds bat here in the bottom of the fourth against Oliver Perez. Roland Gomes and Cabrera. Strike one to Roland, who bounced into a double play, ending the first inning. Pretty good career numbers right there, Roland versus Perez. You can... Obvious Roland did not play for the Reds back in the day when Oliver Perez was rolling all over him. Hit it hard. But right at Reyes, one away. So now Johnny Gomes coming up. 
He fouled out to the shortstop, Reyes, leading off the second inning. Breaking ball that Perez got away with right there. And another pop up by Gomes. And both of them into the net of the red shortstop. Two away. I'd well, like to remind you this coming weekend, have a ladies' night out at the ballpark Friday night. That's his Friday night. Ladies' night. The first 10,000 ladies in attendance receive a free Reds tote back courtesy of Dub Chocolate. Start your weekend out in the fan zone. They'll have the chocolate dipping station, contest coupons, much more. Call 513 381 Reds or visit Reds.com for tickets to any and all games at Great American Ballpark. Reds coming off of a very good four and two road trip. I mean, when you win the first four and you lose the next two, it leaves a little bit of a sour taste. But the bottom line is, Chris, if somebody would have told you before you took to the road, but you'd win four out of six. You'll take it all day, every day, and you would from now through the rest of the year every time you leave the home. Yeah, field. when you further temper your disappointment by seeing who you lost to. I mean, Chris Carpenter is one of the best pitchers in the league, and Kyle Loesch threw the ball extremely well on the day before. And you're playing against the Cardinals, maybe the best or the second best team in this league, and their home ballpark in front of full houses. It's not an easy task. Two out single by Cabrera, perfect two for two. But you know they were right there with him though. I mean, outside of the game yesterday, which got away from him late, it was a three nothing game, and it was Carpenter on the mound. But boy, Saturday could have gone either way. I mean, you're right there with him. Not saying they're as good as the Cardinals yet, but I mean, here they played him six times, and granted they're two and four, but they're not far off. There's a drive into right center field by Heisey, but run down by Pagan, and that'll end the inning. I hit a man left. We go to the fifth. The Mets and the Reds are still hockey teams going back to 1999. Reunite 11 years later in Hockey Town. Follow the journey of Catholic Central against Trenton. Replaytheseries.com. One run, three hits, two men left on base for the Mets. One run, three hits, one big error. And three left on base for the Reds. That error was by Bruce Dubbs. With two outs and nobody on in the New York second inning. He had put Ike Davis at second base, and he scored when this man, Jeff Francoeur, had a single into left field to tie the game. Fouled away, nothing in two to Francoeur. Tom, we lost a fine Reds fan and a real fine man on Saturday when Ricky Kemper... Uh, yep. Red's one of our red security guards for the last eight or nine years. Lost his battle with cancer when he died at home on Saturday. Always a guy that had a smile on his face. Worked down by the uh, Reds players parking lot a little bit. Had always known for a lot of uh, Bengals tailgate. That's right. So he loved that more than anything. No doubt about it. We'll miss you, Ricky. He had a chance to come down to the ballpark on the last homestand for a game and. Uh, Boy, he was very, very sick. And indeed, our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family and so many friends. Okay, a lot of guys in that Reds uh, dugout sad about that news. Because you'd see him every day when you come to the ballpark. Sure would. In the air right field, backing up on it is Heisey. And just enough room. Barajas flied out to deep left center his first time up.
We'll have two of the three games on this series coming your way here on Fox Sports Ohio tomorrow night. Bronson Arroyo against John Main. Reds live kicks it all off at 6.30. First pitch, 7.10. Radio only Wednesday afternoon. And then we'll have the entire Cubs series over the weekend back on Fox Sports Ohio. Friday and Saturday nights, Sunday afternoon. Again, Heisen backs up to the track two ball. Well, come on down to Tina's. On Friday night at 6, your chance to test your Reds knowledge and win some great prizes. Plus, you could end up on Reds Live right after the game on Fox Sports Ohio. Be a part of the fun at Tina's, which has been there seemingly forever. Well, I asked Paul Keels this question, and I'm asking you the same one. How do you like the Tina's chili? You ever check the chili meter on the way in the door? No, I have not. I mean, is it supposed to be good? Oh, it's good. It's oh, really? spicy, but they okay. they give you an indication. That thermometer is hitting the red. Look out. Ooh, that's not up my alley. You? Oh, you yeah. Like that hot stuff? Bring it on. Wow. There's a roller down to Votto, and he'll take it himself. And that'll end it. That's now eight in a row, retired by Mike Leak. Reds come to bat in the bottom of the fifth, still in a 1 1 affair. Executive Officer of the Reds, Mr. Robert Castellini, there to the far left. Having some friends in for the ball game tonight. Boy, it's amazing how active in the Cincinnati community, and even more so with the creation of the Reds Community Fund and all the good that they are doing for all of Reds country, not just Cincinnati, but Columbus and Indianapolis. And Stretching all the way to Athens and down into the Commonwealth, all over Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana. It's, it's amazing. All the way down to Tennessee. And we know that Bob is living and dying on every pitch. So the Reds come to bat here in a 1 1 game, bottom of the fifth inning. And really, for a guy who struggles so frequently with his command. The Reds more times than not are making it very easy for Oliver Perez tonight. Well, he's thrown a lot of first pitch strikes, but nonetheless, he has been very, very efficient. This is only pitch number 55 for Perez, and here he is in the bottom of the fifth inning. So you do that two ways. One, by you throw a lot of first pitch strikes. Number two, you pitch against a ball club who is aggressive early in the count. That one in the air and out of play. There are two traditions Cincinnati fans have grown in love for generations. Reds baseball and JTM beef hoagies. Grab a bag today and taste the tradition. JTM food, family, fun. As in tomorrow night for you, big boy, Michael Pickett and the JTM chuck wagon will be here. Now, now where are they set up shop? They're going to be set up over between the stadium and the East Parking Garage of the U.S. Bank Center. All right. All the public safety officers, the security guards and so on will be invited over there to join the feast. Looking forward to it. Got an apron for you. Don't worry. Good. I need it. And a bib. Oh, you're know, not eating. You're serving. Oh, okay. Well, I've done that too. There's a big difference between an apron and a bib. Well, an apron I could have been cooking, right? Yeah. I'll do a little bit of that. Oh, good. Have the grill set up. Be ready to roll. We're going to check you out. All right. Maybe I'll give you a grade tomorrow. We're allowed to have a couple beers uh, during all that, or oh, we got to go to work. Oh, we're working. No uh, way. Uh, well, no more than usual. Anyway. That's right. <laughs> two and two, the count on Hernandez. And there's ball three. <laughs> three and two on Ramon, trying to get aboard and. Create some action here in the Reds' fifth inning. Each team with three hits, each team with a run. And there is strike three called. Ramon didn't like it. Mike DeMuro rings him up, and that is strikeout number three tonight for the New York left-handed. Now, he's had somewhat of a liberal strike zone all night long, it seems, anyway. Let's take a look at our Fox tracks and see if DeMuro had it right. He did. You know, it seems like the more confident that Oliver Perez gets, the more you see him 
play with his windup a little bit. He'll hesitate at the top, hold his leg a little bit more, sometimes more than other pitches, just trying to upset the pitcher's timer or the hitter's timing. When he's not going well, he doesn't do that stuff. Or when he starts to feel good, that's when that little character begins to come out of him. Perez has not had a win in a major league since August the 18th of last year against Atlanta. Now again to repeat he missed a lot of time last year. Knee problems. Leading to knee surgery. His last start against the Dodgers. He only lasted three and two thirds innings gave up three hits three runs and walked four batters. I mean, this is by, well, not by far. We'll see how the rest of it goes. But he's only had one start where he got to the sixth inning, and right. that's when he allowed one run against St. Louis, his second outing of the year. Exactly. I think Jerry Manuel, when they send Perez out, and he he probably had to feel the pressure tonight that he was battling for a spot in the rotation. And that they hope to get maybe 15 to 18 outs out of him when he's, they send him out there. Oh, he's two away from 15 right now. Perez retired Mike Leak on a ground ball to short stranding two in the second inning. And now the break even pitch. Ball three. Second time Leak has gone to a full count against Perez. Do it again at three and two. Well, that Cincinnati Bell CBTS Pilot House jam packed out there tonight. That's a great spot to watch a ball game. I mean, when you sit here and you look at it straight away center field, you're thinking, man, it's got to be far away. Chris, you and I've been up there numerous times. That's a great spot. It is a great spot. Unfortunately, we're there after the game. You know, last year. George and I broadcast a game from up there. I know. I think it's about time we make our reservation to bring our crew out there and do it again this year. It's a great idea. We were right about somewhere around here, I think, last year. Three and two again to leap. How about this at bat? Love it. I mean, he is really one of the only, what, two or three? That have had extended it back to the entire game against Perez. This will be the ninth pitch coming and this at back. And he draws a walk. How about that? Well, you know, if nothing else, it should show to the rest of the ball club. That Oliver Perez does not have the stuff to put you away. That all he does is give you a good opportunity to get yourself out. So if you're patient and you're working, you're going to make him run his pitch count up and get him in that bullpen, which is always a nice thing to do the first game of the series. And a couple of former teammates at Arizona State over there uh, having a short visit. Mike Davis and Mike Lee. Like one to Drew Stubbs, who homered leading off the game at the left center field and then was robbed of a hit on a great play made by David Wright, crossing from fair ground to foul ground and threw him out by a step in the third. Stubbs. Leak to go ahead, run it first. Held on over there by Davis. Nowhere near the strike zone. Rod Barajas trying to settle down Perez out there on the mound. No action in the New York bullpen. It's been a pretty Easy night for Perez. 
Just 71 pitches thrown so far, and he's one out into the bottom of the fifth inning. Two and two on Drew Stubbs. Perez okays a sign with Barajas. The breaking ball is rolling in. You know, it seems like every time the Reds match up with a new opponent, they're playing somebody who's on quite a roll. Well, Dusty Baker made that comment. I'm not sure what paper, but he's right as you look at it. I mean, the Padres had won six in a row. The Astros had won eight of ten. The Cardinals, five in a row. They kept continued to roll. They won two out of three from the Reds. And the Mets come into town, having lost their last two, but still eight out of their last ten. Now, the good news is, is that aside from the Cardinals, and the Padres have shown themselves a pretty good team. I mean, the, the, the more wins you have in a row, the more likely you are to begin to trend back towards the mean, which is that back to 500. So the, the more likely you are to begin to lose a little bit to get back towards that 500 mark. 22nd pitch of this inning for Perez. And an excuse me, roller. And this will be an infield hit. Yes. Too many people on this field or in this stadium that can do the things that Drew Stubbs have done tonight. One is go yard deep to left center field to start the game off. The other to beat out a ground ball, slowly hit to the second baseman. A check swing right there. He gets out of the box quickly and never looks back. Dan Wharton, the pitching coach, will come out and visit with Perez. Who struck out Ramon Hernandez to begin this inning? You know the real big at bat in this inning so far is that walk by Mike Lee. No doubt about and it. I, Dan Orthen's got to be thinking, man, does this remind me of last night when they played the Philadelphia Phillies and Johan Santana walked the opposing pitcher Jamie Moyer with the bases loaded? That was the key at bat in that entire ball game. I'm not saying the leaks at bat is quite as key, but he made him work hard to do it. Now all of a sudden he's running his pitch count up to 22 in this inning. After throwing only eight and nine in the previous two. And nine of the 22 were the at-bat to leak alone. So now a chance for Brandon Phillips. Reds need this guy to start knocking in runs. Only nine RBI so far this year for Phillips. And he looks at ball one. Of course, he began the year in the cleanup spot. And yes, he has been swinging the bat better here of late. But runs batted in have been few and far between. None. On the just completed six game road trip. Now, some of that has to do with the fact that the leadoff hitter didn't get on all that much. I mean, as long as Brandon Phillips stays in the number two hole, he will not get as many RBI opportunities as he had when he was batting fourth. So you have to look at him and his production in a little different manner. But a good opportunity right here to get some damage done. Always pretty good hitter against left handers. Two one, one out. One one game, a one one count. And it's a fastball low, two balls and a strike. And now good hitters count at two and one. And you gotta believe Perez. Desperately needs to throw a strike here. We'll see if Phillips can jump on one. Swung right through. Got a little long that time. Kind of pulled his shoulder out as you see right there. Really got it going first before his hands came through. Two balls, two strikes on Brandon Phillips. But Brandon's 
nine RBIs this year. Six of them have come with two out in the inning, which is the most on a team. But here just one out. They're trying to break a 1-1 tie in the bottom of the fifth inning. Stubbs at first, Mike Leak the runner at second. And it's in the air, short right field, and Francoeur will get there. And Leak drifting far off the bag was lucky he wasn't doubled up. So Will Phillips with a weak fly ball, and there are two away in the inning. The Reds are to break this 1 1 affair. It falls on the shoulders. It seems like more times than not to Joey Votto. He walked in the first inning, struck out swinging in the third. in his fifth inning upcoming for Oliver Perez but he's still not been scored upon in this inning a one out walk followed by an infield single but a big out there on Phillips and now ball to strike on Vada Second full year skipper of the Mets took over two years ago and had him right there in contention until the final days of the year. That one fouled off out of play third base side and Perez ahead of one ball and two strikes. Of course, the Mets had those two years in a row where they just collapsed at the end of the year. Three years ago had that lead. Of seven games with 17 to go. And didn't even need a one game playoff to lose a division title. The Philadelphia Phillies won the divisional championship the final day of the regular season. And that year went on to win the World Series. One and two to Joey Votto. Emergency swing and was able to foul it off. Speaking of the Phillies, they've tied the Cardinals in the bottom of the fifth inning, a 1-1 game there. And that's our score here in the bottom of the fifth. Now the 1-2 pitch. And served up the middle. Under the glove of the diving Reyes, and this will break the 1-1 tie. Leak scores on the third go Stubbs, and the Reds have a two to one lead on a two out one scoring single by Joey Votto. What a very satisfying at bat for Joey Votto right there because he kept that at bat alive. Pitch after pitch, he even had some very awkward swings just to try to foul a pitch off. Here's the one before he gets a base hit. It's a very awkward swing. He even laughs about it a little bit just by staying alive. So you work it, you work it until the pitcher gives you a better one to swing. Low and away, Votto likes it down there on the fastball, and he's able to gun it right by the shortstop. 14th RBI of the year by Votto, and that'll bring up Scott Rowland. The runners on the corner, still two away, and now one run lead for the Reds. Ball one. Not a bad pitch from a pitcher standpoint. Look how low that ball is, and really not that of an aggressive of a swing by Votto, but he's waiting, waiting, perhaps not to be fooled by that breaking ball. And it was a fast ball, and he was able to jab it through there. Stubbs going to be reminded perhaps by Mark Berry down the third base to very much be on his toes. Perez can be extremely wild. 
Has thrown a number of pitches already tonight in the dirt. Barajas is a very good defender behind the plate. But anything that gets away from Barajas, the way Stubbs can run, it could be a two run lead. Found off out of play, one and two. Perez knocking on the door of a 40 pitch in. The next one he throws will be number 37. I mean, he threw 17 pitches combined in the two innings previous to this. And really, as you pointed out, it was Mike Leak, the pitcher, ironically, leading the way with a nine pitch at bat capped off with ball four. But a two out single by Votto breaks the 1 1 tie. So the Reds have a 2 1 lead as we march on to inning number six. Sports Ohio, Jim Day with you in the upper deck behind home plate. Terrific view of the river. I'm here for tonight's Meyer Textball question. And last year, the National League did not have a 20 game winner throughout the league. Our question this year. Our tonight is, will there be a 20-game winner in the National League this season? Text one if you think yes, two for no. Three, seven, six, six, four is where you text your answers to. Standard text message rates apply. And you would think yes, guys, if you look at the starts that some of the starting pitchers have gotten off to. We're only a month into the season. Ubaldo Jimenez and Roy Holiday both have five wins. Jimenez has a no-hitter already. And then you got a bunch of guys tied at four. Wainwright, Carpenter, Lincecum, Pelfrey with the Mets, who the Reds are going to miss. It's a fly ball. And uh, if these guys keep up this pace, they will, there'll be more than one guy that will win 20 games this season. What do you think, fellas? I think Roy Halladay's got a, uh, a cinch. If he stays healthy the way he's been carving up the league so far, what's he got? Three complete games already? Two of them shutouts? I think he's a cinch to win 24 games at least uh, in my estimation. Wow, that's, Jimenez, that's you know, I think, yeah, I know. I mean, he's going to get 33 starts and he's that good of a pitcher. Jimenez, you know, when that Colorado team gets going, we handicapped the West. We didn't give enough credit to Colorado. They've got a lot better team, it appears, than what a lot of people thought. And Jimenez has got as good a step as anybody. But Halliday would be the only guy I would feel that comfortable about. And apparently many at home agree as well. We have a two to one ball game here. Reds leading with one out in the sixth inning. Hey, Mike Leake could be three and oh, as getting ready to say, you know, all of a sudden, if Leake gets a victory here tonight, and we have a long way to go, but he'd go to three and oh in really one month of the year. Of course, uh, you know, 20 game winners have, have not been a common occurrence. Among National Leaguers, Randy Johnson a couple of times, Roy Oswald twice, Kurt Schilling twice. Well, you know, part of it, Tom, of course, is you have to play for a team that wins a lot of games, number one, unless you're Steve Carlton. And number two, you have to go deep into a ball game. And nowadays, with so much attention being made to pitch counts, and a pitcher gets to 105 pitches and a manager wants to lift them out because he wants them to be strong next time, well, if you only pitch six innings, you leave a lot to be for chance in the bullpen. Well, that's the other part for Halliday that I think he has going for him is mm -hmm. even on the rare nights where he doesn't throw the ball well. That Philadelphia offense uh, can do more than enough damage where, you know, he can have a bad night and still vulture a win. Right. Colorado, too, with him in it, especially at home. Well, Colorado's going to be tough because at home, that will eventually turn into a very offensive ballpark when it starts heating up, mm -hmm. humidors or not. First walk of the night issued by Mike Lee. One of the things the Mets did not do well at all last season, in fact, they were quite poor, was base run. A lot of mental mistakes. And boy, have we seen those all over baseball to begin this year, including this Reds team on the bases. And one thing that Jerry Manuel told his club the very first day in spring training is those days are over. So he has every single player on his team, or at least he's trying to impart to them, but that is unacceptable this year. Well, they've already done a lot better job. 
Of course, their main base dealer is not the guy on base right now. Castillo has three swipes and only one one time thrown out. But David Wright has seven stolen bases. He's been thrown out only once. One and two to late. Jason Bay has a couple, has not been thrown out. Jeff Francoeur down at the bottom of the order has a couple. So Jerry Manuel's trying to get the entire team to run a little bit, just not the, the guys who have that reputation. One, two to count, and a foul ball back out of play. Reyes 0 for 2, and a line drive right at Joey Votto with Castillo standing at first to end the first. Votto called it and doubled up the running. Well, don't you love the pace that Mike Leak pitches at? I mean, you made a comment about Roy Oswald, how painful it was to see him take so long, and he and his catcher have such a hard time figuring out what's going on. Well, Hernandez and Leak, they're on the same page. He gets it and goes. Leak trying to come in through the side gate there and didn't miss by much. Boy, that was a good looking pitch. I mean, really, only having watched him now five games. Have you found anything he doesn't do well? Mike Lee? He almost picked him off coming over there again. You know, these are the kind of things. Throwing to first base, knowing when you're going to get over there. And Joey just missed the tag right there with a quick swipe. Those are things you get with experience in the minor leagues. There goes a runner. Throw down to second and is dropped by... Cabrera, either the ball was jarred out of there when Castillo slid into him. Not sure which. That was a good throw by Hernandez, but now Castillo stands at third with only one out. It looks like it may have hit him in the head, or it hit hit him in the head as the glove was resting on his helmet. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get a good look from this angle or not. Oh no, it just tipped off the end of Castillo's glove or uh, Cabrera's glove. That's got to be an error on Cabrera. I mean, that ball's right on the money. Absolutely. And he would have had him. So it is an error on Cabrera. Now the tying one at two. And a swing and a foul ball out of play again by Reyes. So the Reds infield draws in. Roland Cabrera, Phillips, and Votto. Trying to cut down the potential tying run. And that runner is Castillo, 90 feet away with one out in the inning. 3-2 again. Drilled in the right center field. This will tie the game. And it's up against the wall. Ray is on his way to second with a run-scoring double. But it's a 2-2 game. And for Reyes, his seventh RBI of the year. Now, Reyes, second time tonight, he's hit the ball hard. First time was a double play, a little sinker away, and Reyes went right down to get that pitch. Looked like Ramon Hernandez is inside on that pitch, wanted it in on his hands, kind of floated back over the plate, and Reyes, boy, when he's healthy, a good player. Well, you're not lying. Well, now more work to do to keep it in a 2-2 game. Every time the Reds have scored... In the first, the Mets tied at the next half inning. Then the bottom of the fifth, and here in the top of the sixth, the Mets tied up again. 0 oh, and 1 to Jason Bay. And now 0 oh, and 2. Swinging his bed. The two errors tonight have just killed the rest. I mean, really, for all intents and purposes, Leak should be tossing a shutout right now. The air by Stubbs with two outs and nobody on in the first. As you look at the put away pitch on Bay, 
But then a throw down to second base a moment ago. I mean, they had Castillo out if Cabrera just catches the ball. But he dropped it, which kept Castillo on base. And then the double by Reyes is able to knock him in. Oh, hateful air. One and oh, the count. And it's an air strike. One and one now to David Wright. Leak ahead of right at one ball and two strikes. One hundred pitch of the night upcoming from Mike Lee. Three very easy innings. And three others where he had to work. Twenty or more pitches, including this one. Strike three call. Boy, did he go to work on day and right. No contest in those at bats. But the Mets tie it 2 2. Reds coming to bat. Bodies can. Scotty Rowland. Been doing it low these many years. Took away a hit from Jason Bay back in the second inning. And there you look at our Coors Light Freeze Can. Brought to you by Frost Brew. Coors Light. After five and a half, two runs, four hits, three men left on base for the Mets. The Reds, two runs, five hits, two errors. And they've been dignified. Five men left on base. Johnny Gomes looks at a fastball strike to begin the inning. He'll be followed by Cabrera and then Chris Heisey. Perez nearly a 40 pitch inning in the fifth. So we'll see what he has left. A few bodies stirring around in that Mets bullpen. As Johnny's now behind 0 and 2. So he had strike three there. Reds have action in their bullpen for the first time tonight. We told you Lee right at the 100 pitch mark. Daniel Ray Herrera, the left hander, and Michael Lincoln, the right hander, getting loose. And they appear to be getting loose in a hurry. Well, also getting down the bottom of the inning, too, where he is fifth scheduled batter in the inning. Well, that huge uppercut swing, and three times tonight, Gomes has popped up twice to the shortstop. And now to Jason Bay and left. Six innings of two run baseball, four hit baseball given up by a leak. Orlando Cabrera, a perfect night, a single to center and a single to right. Arizona and Houston tied at one early on in the second inning. They're already in the seventh inning in Philadelphia. Still the Cardinals and the Phillies in a 1-1 game. And a good series later tonight out of West Colorado visits San Diego. Somebody, anybody trying to make some noise out in that National League West outside of San Diego and the Giants. Everybody else having a tough time. Dodgers had to win three in a row to climb back from six games under 500. Two and one on Cabrera. Only in 
inside corner. Good pitch there by Perez. Two and two. Yeah, that's a little splitter that he just came up with really this year. Maybe a little bit towards the end of last year. He throws a changeup and a splitter. We get the sneak preview of seeing it in his glove from center field. That one that comes in about 84 miles an hour is just enough off his fastball. Perez set to throw his 100th pitch of the game. And it comes to Orlando Cabrera with one out here in the sixth inning of a 1 1 game. And there's ball four, and that's walk number four by Oliver Perez. And the Reds have a lead run aboard, and here comes Chris Heisey. Heisey playing in his first major league game tonight. Was called up from Louisville when Chris Dickerson went down. And by the way, Dickerson had surgery to remove the hamate bone and wrist surgery earlier today. Is expected to miss anywhere from four to six weeks, if not longer. We're glad to hear that surgeries, plural, went well for Chris. And I'm sure he's watching the game right now. All on the way to Heisey. Yeah, we wish him the best yep. and get back soon. Nice young man. He works hard. Sure does. It away. One ball and one strike. Chris struck out his first time up. His first major league at bat in the second inning. And then fly it out to deep right center field. His last time up in the fourth. Now you were talking about that at bat by Mike Lee. He, you know, he fouled off in route to that base on balls. Five pitches. So he may hear the right hander. Valdez, a lefty, pardon me, Chris, getting loose. And he becomes the first Reds pitcher since they started tracking that sack. Routine for Pagan to away. And they started tracking it back in 1987s uh, when Stats uh, Inc. came around. But he's the first pitcher to, pitcher to have fouled off five pitches in and at bat and then eventually work a walk. You know who else was one of those guys, don't you? Back in 1994, the Cowboy, Jeff Brenton. Against the pitcher he named Pat four. Gomez, who never pitched another game the rest of his life after that at bat. <laughs> I couldn't tell you who he pitched for. <laughs> San Diego? I have no idea. I might not be wrong about that. <laughs> You're laughing. The ball's fouled out of play. He was there at Rocky Park. <laughs> it might be too. I mean, some of the other guys, you know, Mike Leake against Oliver Perez, pretty good career. Dave Burba did it against Fred Saber, a yeah. great career. John Smiley against Ishmael Valdez, good pitcher. Chris Reitzma did it against A.J. Burnett. Oh, and one on Ramon Hernandez. Bouncing ball back up through the middle, a base hit. Cabrera going first to third. Here's a throw by Pagan in there safely. So that decision now is easily made by Dusty Baker. Pitcher spot coming up. And Mike Leak will be taken down for a pinch hitter. A little overspin on that ball. It takes an extra hop through the middle right there. And Cabrera, even with two outs, going to take a chance and go to third base ahead of the throw. Easily he gets in there. So the Reds have him on the corners. Miguel Cairo coming up to bat. For Leak, who goes six innings in the game, allows four hits, two runs. One of the runs an earned run, although neither one of them should have scored. Four strikeouts and one walk for Lee. Be nice to get a run here and give this young man a chance to get his third win. Well, here's a situation where Jerry Manuel is saying to himself, okay, they've announced Cairo, a right-handed batter, as a pinch hitter. Is Manuel like... Perez against Cairo better than he would bringing in a right-hander to face then a left-hander 
off the Reds bench. And of course, on that bench from the left side, they have Jay Bruce and Lance Nix. Well, remember, with all the runs that the, the Mets have given up over the last couple of games, you said it early on that they've given up more than 10 runs in the last two games in each of them. Their bullpen's beat up a little bit. And they know what they've got right now in Perez out there. He's still throwing the ball pretty good. They're going to try to stay with it. Well, now Bill Cairo has had some success against Oliver Perez. Two hits and six career at bats, and one of the hits a home run. It's a big at bat right here for Cairo. Who, of course, has seen very, very little playing time after winning his spot on the opening day roster, and he looks at ball one inside. Cairo only has 18 at bats, two hits, and an RBI. He's one for nine as a pinch hitter with his lone run batted in. So the options on that bench were Cairo, Yanish, and Hannigan, although Dusty Baker we've seen for three years now reluctant to use a backup catcher when he only has two catchers on the team very early in the game. Two and oh. Some might say Micah Owings. That's not going to happen in the sixth inning. Good hitters count for Cairo here, 2 and 0. Oh. And he lifts the fly ball to short left field. So the inning is over. Reds get a walk and a hit strand two. They've left seven men on base. A no decision tonight for Mr. Lee. Can he find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network? AT&T rethink possible. By your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Honda dealers. Visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com and my Granger. With over 900,000 products for the ones who get it done. Two runs, four hits, three men left on base for the Mets. Two runs, six hits, two errors. And seven men left for the Reds. The night is over for Mike Leake. No decision either way for the rookie right-hander. And replacing him is Southpaw Daniel Ray Herrera. Now, Daniel Ray Herrera, normally very, very tough against left-handers. And... He's been used a lot, 14 times already for Herrera. Boy, that earned run average is very good. He's only walked one batter, and he's kept the ball in the yard. Herrera pitched in two of the three games over the weekend in St. Louis. They strike one to left-handed batting Ike Davis. Really, when the Reds let that game on Saturday get away from him, Herrera, a big reason why. Makes one batter, allowed one hit. Was charged with a run. And of course, that run scored on the bases loaded walk to Matt Holliday. And that snapped a scoreless streak at 10 outings, spanning seven and a third innings for Daniel Ray Herrera. Two to Davis, and now the count even. Hey, you know, Davis and Mike Leake, the red starter, were teammates at Arizona State for a couple of years. Davis was the first baseman. Leake was the Friday evening pitcher. But when Leake would get him some problems, they bring in the hard-throwing Davis to get him out of some jams. Mike Leake sitting there behind Mark Berry. Got to visit a little bit with... Mike Davis before the ball game where he reminisced a little bit about his former Sun Devil teammate. Very interesting couple of stories. Three and two the count on Davis and Herrera bringing it. And it's grounded. That's a fair ball down the right field line. And a go-ahead run stands at second base. That's an outstanding at bat by the rookie Davis. And here's some of that conversation that Chris had with Ike Davis talking about his teammate Mike Leake back at Arizona State. 
Well, like, you know, in the in the later in the inning, sixth, seventh inning, if you, uh, you know, bases loaded, first and second, their big lefty came up, like Castro for Stanford or something like that. I would come in and get that guy out. Leak would go to first base. And then next inning, I might go back to first base. He would be on the mound again until the ninth, and then I would come in the ninth and close, <laughs> and he'd go to first base. It's good stuff. Yeah, it was interesting stuff. I asked him, all right, which of you guys threw the hardest? He said, no question about it. I did. But Leak's the one pitching in the big leagues. Well, Herrera unable to get the job done. He gives up the double to the rookie, Davis. And now with the right-handed batters, Frank Coor and Barajas upcoming. Dusty Baker will call to the bullpen once again. Our skyline chilly call to the bullpen. We're in a 2-2 game in the seventh, and we'll be back with more in a moment. Inning of a 2-2 game, a leadoff double by Ike Davis. Chases Daniel Ray Herrera. And now on the pitch, right-hander Mike Lincoln. Now Lincoln, the right-hander, brought in here against Jeff Francoeur, who's a good fastball hitter. Nearly went yard opposite way, but I have to think sometime in this at-bat, he's going to see a Lincoln curveball or two. Well, he had a duck underneath the Lincoln curveball there. Lincoln had a rough time of it against St. Louis, the second game of that series. Many in the bullpen did that night. He walked the only two batters that he faced. Another breaking ball, one and one to Fran Coor. Jeff one for two. Knocked in the first Met run with a single in the center left field, scoring Ike Davis in the second. And then flied out deep to right in the fifth. Lincoln threw him a fastball there, and it's fouled straight back. Yeah, Frank Corr is a very good low ball hitter. You can see the way he sets up. He's got big, tall guy, long arms, and he holds that bat kind of upright. And it's easy for him to drop the bat. In fact, the ball he hit very sharply to left field was one down around the shins. with another fastball and that one misses outside two and two to Fran Poole. I think he's setting up the curveball. And at the right handed batting catcher Barajas next. And then the pitcher spot. A lead off double by Ike Davis here in the Mets seventh inning. And now Fran Poole asks for time. To deep right field, giving Chase Heisey nice running grab, bangs up against the wall. Real nice play there by Heisey, but advancing on to third is Davis. Oh, okay. what a play! Yeah, for a guy that has never played this outfield before, he went into that corner like he's been there a long, long time. In fact, he banged very hard into the bullpen door. The door swings open as he rams into it. Nice running play right there. Put a latch on that baby. So now Barajas, who has flied out to center and flied out to right, has a runner at third, the go ahead run at third. With one out here in the seventh, and the Reds bring the infield in. Breaking ball too low. Falling behind, two balls and no strikes. Told you Barajas had a big weekend against his former team, the Phillies. Hit three home runs and knocked in five the last two days. Good breaking ball there, two and one. In fact, Barajas with a six home run leads all major league catchers in that category. Mike Lincoln's curveball gets it that time, but not really the sharp off the table hook that we're used to seeing. 
Jam shot pop-up. Brandon Phillips going out to get it, and what a huge out that is for Mike Lincoln. Davis still stands at third, but now two away. Well, after the slow curveball inside, he comes right back into the same spot, but this time with a fastball, the Jamsy. Great location right there. Well, now Dusty Baker has a decision. Yeah, Frank Catalanato, a left-handed batter, announced as a pinch hitter. And you just saw the sign given. Of course, the options being you could walk Catalanato and have Lincoln face Pagan for a pinch hitter, or just bring in Rhodes and go right after Catalanato, and that's the move that's made. Sir Arthur comes from the pen. Go ahead, run a third, two away in a seventh. We're back in a moment. Eighth, it's 2010 Reds team photo night. Thanks to Smart Travel. Get your tickets now to any game. The remainder of this homestand tomorrow night, Wednesday afternoon, or Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Cubbies by calling 381 Reds or visit Reds.com. All right, two thirds of the way home. And now Arthur Rhodes coming on to pitch. He will not face Frank Catalanato. Instead, it's pinch hitter Fernando Tatis. Well, Arthur Rhodes has been exceptional, if not more than exceptional. But he'll face a guy who specializes in hitting lefties this year. In fact, Tatis is 0 for 11 against righties, but he's hitting up around 320 against lefties. So he just wondered if this was the matchup that Jerry Manuel figured he would get by sending Catalanato out, daring Dusty Baker to make a move. He made the move, brought in Arthur Rhodes, who's been his most reliable reliever, but he's got his most reliable right-handed pinch hitter up there. Tatis. Fastball in the outside corner at 93. Knee high for strike two. Couldn't hit it if he wanted to. One and two the count. Rhodes shaking off Hernandez a couple of times. Runner at third with two away in the inning. Throw him a fastball and blows him away at 94. Wow. Sir Arthur doing it. Hamlet. So Ohio breaks down the game and talks to the players and coaches on Res Live. Brought to you by Kings Honda in the Kings Auto Mall. Visit kingshondausa.com. The night is over for Oliver Perez. Those six innings allows a couple of runs earned. Threw the ball well tonight. And Henry Mejia, right-hander, will take over. He has thrown seven straight scoreless innings. Going back to the middle of last month, in fact, is unscored upon in nine of his 11 outings this year. Well, he's a young guy. Maybe he doesn't know how hard the major leagues is yet. He's the youngest player in the major leagues at age 20. Here's Henry Mejia. Had a great spring training in 11 spring training games that earned an average of 1.5. And he will see the top of the Reds' order. But you talk about his youth. In fact, he is the youngest pitcher to make a Mets opening day roster since Dwight Gooden back in 1984. Guy's been very good against right-handers, left-handers, makes no difference. Through Stubbs, shows bunt, looks his strike. 95 mile per hour fastball by Mejia. Stubbs, two out of three, let off the game with a home run. Had a hit taken away by Wright on a bouncing ball in the third. And had a check swing infield hit in the fifth. Just threw that one right by Stubbs, did Mejia. And it's only two. Both teams in their last go-round missing a chance 
to break this 2 2 tie. Reds had runners on the corners in the sixth inning. And Miguel Cairo popped up to end that frame. The Mets had a leadoff double by Davis, who went to third with one out. But Mike Lincoln got Barajas on a pop up, and Rhodes, fans, Tatis to end the inning. Well, after watching three straight fastballs from Mejia, why in the world would he even think about that curveball? Well, you know, he's got he's got only two pitches. One is that big curveball and the fastball, but the fastball's got like a natural cut to it. You think it might be a hard slider until you look up and see 95. That is gas. 98 miles per hour there. Wow. Breaking ball, and that's the first pitch he's thrown out of the strike zone. One and two now to Drew Stell, which means you can almost guarantee here comes another heater, or at least be ready for one. Going for the curveball again. Into right field, that'll back up Frank Cool, and he makes a catch, crashing into the wall. Run away in the inning. Stubbs hit that a long way for kind of an awkward swing on an off speed pitch. Frank Corr, he is not afraid to run into the wall. A quiet night for Brandon Phillips. Has bounced out to second. That was a real nice play to throw him out by the Castillo in the first inning. But a sense flied out to center and popped up to right. Phillips, a pair of home runs so far this year. That is major league heat. Well, you're not kidding. When you locate like that, this young man has to be extremely tough to hit. But, like everybody else, capable of a mistake. And Phillips just goes the other way and shoots one through in the right field, a base hit. A good two strike hitting there by Phillips. And Brandon, two stolen bases so far this year. Yes, has been thrown out three times. Well, that fastball that he throws has kind of a, a, a cutter spin on it. You see it spinning right there rather than the straight backward spin. It kind of spins like a slider and has a little bit of a cut action. Joey Votto, he walked in the first, struck out in the third, and knocked in a run with a single to center in the fifth. Tardy on the fastball, strike one. I don't think Barajas wants to go there again. And he comes out for a quick word with young Mr. Mejia. Well, this is the last at bat that Joey Votto had when he finally had a base hit to put the Reds up by one. He had a couple of very tough swings right there, right before his base hit. A little awkward swing, stays alive. The line right by the shortstop, Reyes, and picks up a run. Well, you got to wonder if that's the best move that young Mr. Mejia has to offer. Because if it is... Phillips ought to have about a 12-foot lead over there at first. A 
almost looked like Mejia may have lost his footing or something on that throw. There's a base hit in the left field by Votto. Uh, two base hits and two opposite field base hits by the Reds in this inning. Brandon Phillips going between first and second. Joey Votto going the other way with a pitch out over the plate. Boy, is that a good looking bit of hitting right there. Good stiff front leg right there as he keeps his head on the ball and drives it straight through. So again, a visit to the mound by Mets pitching coach Dan Worthen. Well, he's telling them right now. I don't know if you were able to take a, an idea of it, but you got to stop him on the base pass. Number one, that's the first thing he told him. And the other thing is, he's telling them that they're they're taking the ball and hitting it where they're, you're throwing it. So if you want to get in there with that 98 mile an hour fastball, get in the kitchen. Scott Rowland, however, a very good fastball hitter. So now the 20 year old Dominican will face Scott Rowland. Go ahead, run Phillips at second. Well, he has an enormous lead out there. They're not doing anything to keep him close. I mean, it almost appears as though he could crawl to third. Well, he could get a bigger lead than that. Because you're right, the second baseman Castillo is well off the bag, and the shortstop's well in the hole to try to play roller. You don't even see the shortstop here. They're not even trying to jockey him back. No. One and O to Scott Roller. In the air, right field. Frank Poor will have room. And Phillips will tag up and advance on to third, but there are two gone in the inning. Back to tag up on this fly ball, but he had a big lead out there, and unfortunately, he'll get the third base. But there's two outs. Now you got a matchup here, Tom Brenneman, power pitcher, power hitter. Fans getting behind Johnny Gomes down there. And now they're on the corners with two away in a 2-2 game here in the seventh inning. First pitch fastball, and that's strike one on the inside corner to go. has popped up three times tonight. That fastball runs up and in. Twice to the shortstop, Jose Reyes. And his last time in short left field to Jason Bay. is right. Diving is Gomes, but he's out and the inning is over. Two hits, two left. The Reds have stranded nine, six in the last three innings. But again tonight, Mike Lee, another outstanding game. Another quality start. Only one of the runs of a Scored off of Mike Leake tonight. The earned variety, four strikeouts against only one walk. And really, even though it is the correct scoring decision, neither run should have scored tonight against Leake. Agreed. I mean, they give the runner a stolen base. That was Castillo in the sixth inning, but the throw down to second base by Hernandez was right on the money. Did they give him a stolen base and an error? Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah, because you got to account for two bases. So they give him a stolen base, but then... They charge Cabrera with an error, allowing him to go to third. The bottom line is, and we'll show it to you, if Cabrera catches the ball, Castillo is out. 
So he so would have been out with, well, that would have been the second out of the inning with nobody on base. Then the double by Reyes would have been meaningless. So why would you not assume an out instead of giving the guy a stolen base when he clearly dropped the ball and that's the reason he was safe? It would have happened if the umpire, if he'd have caught the ball, let's say, for example, umpire says out and then the ball is knocked out of his glove and the umpire then has to say safe. Then it would have been an error straight up on Cabrera. Well, pitchers union logic complaint about that. Oh yeah. And they probably should. 1-1 one, one game or 2-2 two, two game. 1-1 one, one count. Votto able to run down the pop-up by Angel Pagan. When you go back to the second inning, a laser by Davis. This play by Stubbs to a two-base error. Very next batter, Fran Corey knocked him in to tie the game at the time at one. Then when the Reds leading two to one in the sixth inning, stolen base attempt with one out by Castillo. Great throw by Hernandez. And Cabrera just dropped the ball. And what do you know? Very next batter, Reyes. Knocks in the run with a double to right center. Strike one to Reyes. Or with Reyes on deck to Castillo. Castillo has been on base twice tonight. A single, the ground out to Votto, and then the walk, the stolen base, and a run scored in the sixth inning. And there's a base hit by Cabrera. Second hit tonight for Castillo. And don't forget, guys, Sunday, May the 9th, this coming Sunday is Mom's Day, Mother's Day. And we have Mom Appreciation Day here at the ballpark. The first 10,000 moms at the Reds' Cub game will save a fashionable Reds scarf. Thanks to Cons. For tickets to the Mother's Day game and the entire weekend against the Cubs, call 513-381-REDS or go to reds.com. Now Jose Reyes. Strike one. Turning around about right handed for the first time tonight. And in roughly half the number of at bats. A 231 hitter from the right side with one RBI, one extra base hit by Jose Reyes. Double play ball here. Cabrera, one throw, and it is in time to double up Reyes and that'll end the inning. Boy, the beat goes on for Arthur Rhodes. How good is this guy? How good is this guy? Chris, how good is this guy? Real good. By subscribing to MLB.TV today, you can see every Reds game live or on demand on your computer. Visit Reds.com for more details. MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. I'd like to send out happy birthday greetings. Oh, tender age of 24, young Mr. Homer Bailey. Happy birthday, Homer. Hoping to celebrate with a Reds win tonight. Fernando Nieve takes over on the mound for New York following Oliver Perez and Henry Mejia. And Orlando Cabrera, who's been on base all three times tonight, looks at ball one. 16 games already for Nieve. I'll tell you one thing about the Mets bullpen. They'll get used often. Jerry Manuel not afraid to have these guys up just about every night. We saw Nieve, you may remember, originally with Houston. Pitched for them in 06 and a little bit in 08. And now begins his second year in the Mets organization. Went from double A to triple A and then to the major leagues in an injury shortened season last year. Nieve coming up through the Astros organization was exclusively a starter. Until they brought him to the big leagues in 2006. Pitched in 40 games that year, 11 of them as a starter.
Cabrera, Heisey, and Hernandez here in the Reds' eighth inning. Boy, and winning games in their final at bat is something the Reds have done with unbelievable frequency so far this year. They are the drama kings without question. In seven of their 12 victories, the Reds have scored the winning run in their final at bat. In fact, you may remember their first six wins of the year were all in their final at bat. Nice to hear in between innings from the Arizona Rookie League coach, Tom Browning, down in Goodyear watching the game. Maybe on satellite down there. I don't know. Maybe he's watching on MLB on his, on his computer. Always good to hear from Tom. Looking for a couple of bombs to maybe put the Reds over the top. Always good to hear from Mr. Brown. Two and two on Orlando Cabrera. And there's ball three. Cabrera single to center field in the second inning, a single to right in the fourth, and drew a one out walk from Perez in the sixth. Chris Heisey waits. 0 for 3 tonight in his major league debut. Real good at bat here by Cabrera. Already eight pitches in the at bat, number nine coming. And has spoiled a couple of strikes already in this at bat from the A.B. The A.B. is really trying to peck away at that outside corner. Very impressed he's got that kind of command. Do it again at three and two. There will be a 10th pitch in this at bat. Cabrera waiting, and here it comes from the AV. Struck him out swinging. Now power versus power. Eventually, the pitcher gets it right by him. Well, that is a live arm right there. Well, a hitless night, and this is Major League debut for Chris Heisey. Well, you know what he's thinking right here, right now. Why not cap off a Major League debut with a long one? And give your team a lead in the bottom of the eighth. Strike one to Heisey. Heisey has very good power. You can see he is a, a very strong young man. One ball and one strike. Heisey, 22 home runs at two different levels last season. And a ground ball down to Davis. Two away. Reds have had a pile of chances here over their last three innings until this eight. They scored one, but left two on in the fifth. Left two more in the sixth. And a couple of more in the seventh. Nine men overall left on base. Now Ramon Hernandez. Who has walked, struck out, and single. Well, it appears a decision has already been made that Francisco Cordero, whether it be a save chance or in a tie game, is going to pitch in the ninth. And it looks like he'll be coming in in a tie game. So, two runs, six hits for the Mets, two runs, eight hits for the Reds. We're on our way to the ninth buddy, but well, it's certainly worth another look. This play by Scott Rowland. Let's roll out Jason Bay in the second inning. Our John Morrell hot dog play of the game.
Uh, Francisco Cordero comes in in this tie ball game, and Cordero, boy, did he have some kind of a road trip. He pitched four days in a row, the first three games in Houston, picked up a save in his last day down there, pitched the first game in St. Louis where he picked up a save. He's had a couple of days off now. He ought to be well rested and ready to go here to start the top of the ninth inning. Four, five, and six in the Mets batting order. Bay, White, and Davis. First pitch swinging. Cabrera deep in the hole. He'll cut it loose and just in time to get Bay. Good strong throw by Orlando Cabrera. One pitch and one out for Cordero. And Orlando that time very quick to set his feet. Get himself a good foundation so he could get a little momentum going to first base. Hey, what, Jason Bay tonight. Been nipped at first base two times. Once on that great play we showed you by Scott Rowland. We've been showing you that one over and over again. And bang, bang at first by that ground ball. Well, now David Wright has struck out swinging, popped up to left, and struck out looking. Red scored on a Stubbs home run leading off the first inning. The Mets scored on an error and a base hit to tie the game in the second. Red's got a two out run scoring single by Joey Votto in the fifth. There's a liner and Heisey what a play to smother it. I mean that's a gamble right there in a 2 2 game here in the ninth inning. But Heisey able to just cover that thing up and not let it get by him. Well as long as it doesn't get by you you've done a nice job because you've got lost nothing right there. But he's able to just get over the top of that ball with his glove shows it but there's no way they're going to call him out. A clear trap. The Mets tied the game on a walk, a stolen base, and a double by Reyes. And now Ike Davis, who's had a good night, reached on the two base error by Stubbs and scored in the second, grounded out to Phillips in the fourth, doubled down the right field line in the seventh. Ball one. and no strikes on Davis. David White is very much a base dealing threat, although taking a very short lead over there. He's seven of eight in stolen base attempts. Well, there are some baseball scouts that take a look at Ike Davis in his swing and his setup and say that, you know, he may not be able to hit like that. Holds his hands high to start and then drops him well down just above his waist where it's where he starts his swing. Almost daring the pitcher to throw that ball upstairs and in to see if he can get his hands through. What he has proved at every level along the way is that he's got very quick hands and can get that bat head through there. Davis one home run, six batted in, and there's a perhaps game saving play right there by Votto. That throw was in the dirt. Well, right is there. Is their biggest and best stolen base threat. But the chance of you picking him off as a right handed pitcher, minimal. You have a better chance of throwing it down the line and giving him an error to, to third base. Tiny lead. A little fastball at 95, down and away from Davis, who comes up empty, and it's two and two. Two and two to Davis. Struck him out. Went out there again at 95. But back to back pitches, same location right here, and same result. Two whips.
now Fran Cooler, and again they continue to throw over there. And I mean, White does not even have what a two-step lead. Off the end of the bat, that'll be a fly ball in the left field, and that's that. So one hit, one left. Reds come to bat bottom of the ninth, a pinch hitter, then back to the top of the order in a 2-2. Cincinnati John Deere dealer this deer season. By the Ohio Department of Public Safety reminding motorcyclists to ride smart. And by Shakely Unicor, Ohio Managed Care Organization for Workers' Comp. All right, Reds come to bat in a 2-2 game last of the night. Fernando Nieve still on the mound for the Mets after working through a perfect eighth inning and Jay Bruce to bat for Cordero leading off the ninth and Bruce of course has been swinging a red hot bat the last two weeks. Jay Bruce, Drew Stubbs, Brandon Phillips a trio here in the Reds ninth inning. Ball one. We talked about the Reds already seven wins in their final at bat. Trying to make it number eight here in the bottom of the ninth. With a number off the end. One away. Beautiful night for baseball. Not a cloud in the sky when this one got underway about two hours and 55 minutes ago. And we're in the bottom of the ninth inning of a 2 2 game. Well, Drew Stubbs started the scoring with a home run leading off the game. He'd like to end the scoring right here and right now. Ball one. St. Louis scored late and beat Philadelphia in the opening game of that four game series 6 3. That's a final. One and one to Stubbs. Arizona leads Houston 4 to 1. That game in the sixth inning at Minute Maid Park. And coming up in about 10 minutes, Colorado and San Diego. Ubaldo Jimenez on the mound for the Rockies against Kevin Correa. This will be our number two. And the Abe has come on and faced five batters and has retired each one of them. You know, the 94 on the Jugs gun is one thing, but the fact that the Reds really aren't getting good swings at him mean that he's a sneaky 94. Brandon Phillips. One for four in the game. Find him with one hearty cut of the bat right there. Strike one. Brandon, two home runs on the year. Quickly behind 0 and 2. Well, it's funny sometimes what happens when a guy comes up as a starter and it just doesn't work out for some guys. It doesn't work out going to the pen. Just watching the A Bay here tonight. That looks like a pretty good move after coming all the way back from injury last year. Mike Leak to front six, allowed four hits, two runs, one earn. Herrera, Lincoln. Two thirds, one hit, no runs. Rhodes cleans up the mess in the seventh. There's a pitch high with a runner at third and two out. Got the final out. 
A lot of hit in the eighth inning, but no runs. And Cordero, one hit, one strikeout, no runs. His only inning of work. on to extra innings tonight at Great American Ballpark. The next inning games, the Mets are one and two. The Reds are on base for the Mets. Get a look at the Reds. Two runs, eight hits, two big errors in this game. And nine left on. This game should have been over a long time ago. But the two errors leading to runs. And off we go to the tenth inning where now Nick Massett takes over and Chris the Reds are hoping this young man can start getting things together. Uh, he certainly has the stuff to get it together. There's no question about that. It's all about being able to place his fastball, though, where he wants to. And of course, after you use your closer at home in extra innings, there is no save opportunity. So you start using your bullpen in reverse order of your setup guy first, and that's where Nick Massett comes in here. Said last year, of course, led the team with a career high 74 appearances and had an ERA right at one over the final 30 outings of the year. His ERA was under one the first two months of the year. And he made it look so easy then. He was using all of his pitches. He had nice, relaxed delivery, stayed over the rubber a long time. Rod Barajas to lead it off, and here Massett has fallen behind 2 0. Oh. It looks just like he's. Kind of doing the same thing he was doing in St. Louis, which is flying open a little bit. The number one cause of pitchers beginning to lose it. That was an ugly outing yesterday in St. Louis for Massett. Two thirds of an inning, walked a batter, allowed a hit, a run. And the Reds are just hoping that it will all come together again and quickly for Massett. Rajas fouls that one straight back two and two. I mean the Reds need this guy to get right. They really need it because right now they just don't have anybody as dominant right to other take than, his job other than Arthur Rhodes and you need both of them precisely because last year even though the you know obviously the Reds did not reach the postseason. I mean they were virtually a lot to win games if they had the lead from the seventh inning on whether it was the combination in the seventh of Rhodes and Massett, Weathers in the eighth, then Cordero in the ninth, or after Weathers was traded, it became Rhodes, Massett, Cordero. They only lost one game all of last year when leading after eight innings. The fewest number of losses of any team in baseball. Well, good team shortened ball games. Two and two, the count on Rod Barajas. Leading off the New York 10th. Struck him out. And that's some of the stuff you were talking about. Well, that's the nasty splitter that Nick Masson has. And when you don't try to overthrow him and just get a good wrist flip at the very end, you're going to get a pitch like that. That ball just buries right into the dirt. Nasty pitch. In fact, that ball goes down so much, sometimes hard to to track that and figure out whether it's a, a slider or a splitter. The splitter will give itself away by going down and into right handers just a little bit. Well, coming off the bench to pinch hit for the A day, switch hitter, Gary Matthews Jr., who of course had that one monster year after bouncing around most of his career before landing in Texas, where a lot of guys put big offensive numbers up. Matthews got the huge contract to go to the Angels. Boy, and it's been a rough go ever since. Was traded during the offseason, is owed a pile of money. And the Angels are paying most of it. Came over back in January in exchange for right hander Brian Stokes. A 
fact, there was some talk over the winter time that maybe Gary Matthews would end up here in Cincinnati. There's Dusty Baker and Gary Matthews Sr., very good friends. Thought they may have something to do with it. Not the right fit. Well, the Angels are still on the hook over two years this year and next for twenty one and a half million dollars for Matthew. The Mets are only paying two million of that. So last year with the Angels he hit two fifty. There's a ground ball to Phillips. And Matthews Jr. is thrown out. You may remember with the Angels he got buried behind Torrey Hunter, Bobby Abreu, and Juan Rivera. Pretty good outfield there. Not bad. Two away, and here comes on Hell Pagan. Mets will go to their bullpen in the bottom of the tenth inning, and the Reds will be sending up Joey Botto, Scott Rowland, and Johnny Gomes. Pedro Feliciano. Who is very good, not just against left handers, he's very good against lefties and righties. We'll see him in the bottom of the 10. There's a sharp two hopper. Phillips down on one knee to throw off Pagan. And a 1 2 3 10 for Mass. Reds will try and win it in the bottom of the 10th when we come back for the eighth time already this year in their final at bat. If they do so, they'll try and beat. Pedro Feliciano. Another better left-hander. Better left-hander comes in. Another one of these Mets pitchers that has had a lot of appearances already. 14 games now. But look at the earned run average. He has been very tidy out there. Not giving up very much at all. A opponent batting average under 140. And to complement the fastball and the very sweet slider that he normally throws to left-handers, he's come up this year with a, a very fine changeup, I'm told. So the we'll only on shape you saw there on that panel of, of some dominant stats. He has walked nine batters in 11 innings. All right, Joey Votto to lead things off. Votto two for five in his career against Feliciano. And there's strike one. Rolling 0 for one against Feliciano. And then Johnny Gomes. Oh, and two to bottom. Yeah, and there's the changeup right there. Not very often do you see left-handers throw other left-handed hitters changeups, but he's been very good in doing that. Looks like a fastball just comes in a lot slower and disappears at the plate. Trying to get aboard here to start the Reds' 10th inning of this 2 2 game, opening game of this three game series between these two teams. Feliciano, the fourth pitcher of the night. And a slow roller. Get over there. And Votto is out at first. Mike Davis going to get it. And the pitcher, Feliciano, was on his way to first right when it left the bat. Well done by the Mets pitcher. Yeah, that's exactly what his assignment is. Get to the bag and then let somebody else field the ball. As soon as you break off the mound and can't get the ball, you got to go to first base. And he gets there just in time, plays it like a first baseman. Good job because Votto hustling down the line. They like his glove work, too. Lovato set down, and here's Scott Rowland. 0 for 4 in the game. Strike one. Three game ending home runs in Scott Rowland's career, although it's been longer than a decade since he had his last one. One and one to Scotty Rowland.
Johnny Gomes waits in the on deck circle. Johnny Gomes has ended a Reds win ready this season with a home run. That was their first one of the year. Back on April the 8th when he blasted that solo shot off Jason Muck. 2 1 Reds victory. Two and two to Roland. Count is one four. That pitch missing away. Timeout before this 3 2 pitch coming from Feliciano. And now we're ready. And here it comes. Grounded foul again. Well, that breaking ball that Feliciano throws to the back foot of a right handed hitter, there's not a whole lot more you can do to it except hit it foul. Starts that baby right at the middle of the plane by the time it gets to the catcher. It'll just about hit a right handed hitter in the back foot. Luciano okays his sign with Barajas, and again a 3-2 pick. And it's shot into right field, and then a fall in the base hit. So the Reds have the winning run aboard with one out, an outstanding at bat by Roland. That's his first hit tonight. Yeah, finally got a fastball going away with him, and he went with it. Good job of hitting. Johnny Gomes has popped up three times tonight. His last at bat, he bounced out to David White at third. And when the Reds completed their last home stand, they beat San Diego five to four, winning in their final at bat that game in the bottom of the eighth. And again, Gomes first pitch hacking pops it up. Two down in the inning. to the plate. He's two out of three. A couple of hits is drawn a walk. Breaking ball is in there at the belt. Strike one, two, Cabrera. It's needing a win to get back to that 500 mark. They slipped the game under with that 
series finale, rubber game loss of the three game weekend series yesterday to Chris Carpenter and the Redbirds. One and one to Orlando Cabrera. And it's outside and low. Well, you can see in this inning when now two of the Reds hitters that have given Feliciano a chance to. To throw a few out of the strike zone, he'll do it. Roland went to three and two before getting a hit. Cabrera now two and one ahead. Three and one ahead. Apparently trying to change the mojo a little bit down in that Reds dugout. He's working the far end of the dugout. Three and two. Roland will get started over at first. And Cabrera once time, waiting a little too long for his liking, and now right back in there. Ball four. Well, well, well. Here comes young Mr. Heisey. Called up to the major leagues over the weekend. Tonight makes his major league debut. He has struck out twice fly to center. And his last at bat, he grounded out to first. Can Chris Heisey be the hero and end this thing here in the bottom of the 10th inning? What better way to get your first big league hit? First pitch swinging is Heisey. And he dumps it out of play. But it's the either Feliciano is a dramatically different pitcher. Like a lot of guys are, but he seems to be more so. Ahead 0-1 as opposed to 1-0. Well, I mean, his whole game is off-speed stuff and changing speed. And when you get the first strike in there, then you can begin to subtract and add. When you're behind, you've got to throw a strike, and it's very hard to, to take control. Here comes the changeup. 1-1. One we get the peak, of course, in the bend of his glove from our center field camera. When you see that index finger disappear, almost like he's making an OK sign and dropping that ball in there. Classic circle change grip. One and one to Chris Heisey. This one's in the air. Foul ground. Does Davis have room? He does. A hit, two men left. The Reds have stranded 11, and we're going to inning number 11. And the rest of these guys having some fun here at the ballpark tonight. Hanging around at the very end to see if they can make the Reds come away with a victory in this first of three against the Mets. Well, maybe they'll bring them a little luck here tonight. That's what we need is a little bit of luck. There's no doubt about it. Or some hits. Or a run. Any of the above. In the meantime, a zero hung up there by young Mr. Massa would be a nice thing here to order up in the 11th inning. So two runs, nine hits for the Reds. Two errors, they've left 11 men on base. The Mets, two runs, seven hits, no errors. It's stranded five. And Massa, after a one, two, three, ten to face Castillo. Reyes and Bay in the New York 11. It's been a good night for Luis. Two hits and three at bats, a stolen a base, drawn a walk, scored a run. And Castillo has been around a long, long time. And it's not a great major league career, and I'm not saying he's been a great player. 
But as far as just putting a career into perspective, I think it's safe to say he's had a great career. He really has had a great career. Zeroing in on 2,000 hits. Has nearly 370 career stolen bases. And he swung on and fouled out of play. Of course, he won a World Series in 2003 with the Florida Marlins. He's been to three All-Star games. And has just been a very, very good player for a long time. Liner caught by Cabrera. And then you throw in for Castillo the fact that he's won what three gold gloves. Well, wherever he's been, Florida, Minnesota, or with the Mets, he's answered their leadoff man worries on base percentage lifetime of 370. Now Reyes. One hit, but a big one. A game tying double to right center field in the sixth. Trying to hit home run number one with that swing, and he's down strike one. Ray, as you figure, sooner or later will go back into that leadoff spot for this Mets team. Two years ago, the last year he was a healthy Met, he had 204 hits in 2008. 16 of them home runs. He also had 37 doubles and 19 triples to lead the league. Yeah, the triples, one of the most exciting plays in all the game, and he is the, when he hits them, the most exciting player. Two and two to race. You, know, you take a look at Jerry Manuel's lineup, though, and if you're if you're one of these Saber metrics types and, and look at on base percentage, you know Angel Pagan has an on base percentage of 314, but after that Castillo 341, and then you have Jose Reyes at number batting number three. Maybe they're just trying to kickstart him, batting him ahead of Jason Bay and, and David Wright. But Wright is a guy that I would think this should be in the number three or four hole. He's a guy getting on base. 421 on base percentage. Slugging home runs. He's hitting 444 on the last five games, driven in nine. Get him up there. But they've got a lot of speed they're trying to exploit. We have two not a race. Don't walk him. Just a step day next. You know, you put. Jose Reyes on, if, even if it's just the threat of the stolen base, he distracts you just enough that you may hang one to Jason Bay. 3-2 count, and here it comes. And there's a line drive center field base hit. So Reyes aboard, he earns his way on. A hard turn at first. And he represents a go-ahead run with a one-out single here in the 11th inning. You know, don't know how to explain it, but a base hit to get a hitter on doesn't have the same negative energy work on the pitcher as does a walk. Although they both end up with the same result. So now Bay has bounced to third, fouled out to first, struck out and grounded to Cabrera at short. 0 for 4. Strike one. I went foul away and mass it in front of Bay and nothing at two.
Ray has a big lead over there at first, held on by Votto. Mass at a glance over once, twice, a third time. And a breaking ball, a strike three called the day, and he knew it. Um, boy, what a difference a day makes between what Nick Massett looked like in St. Louis and what he looks like tonight. Much more in control tonight, not driving off and lying his front shoulder open. He's staying right with it, and boy, that breaking ball right there just fools Jason Bay. And a big strikeout when he needed it. One more big out to go now for the Reds right-hander and a big deep breath before he locks horns with David Wright. Wright has struck out swinging, popped up to shallow left. Struck out looking in a six and single to right his last time up in the ninth. Well, this guy's a good high fastball hitter. Short arms, very powerful. Turns on a heater. Fastball too low to right. Second time he's gone that way tonight, and Rowan will try and throw him out. But Wright runs very, very well, and he lugs out an infield hit. So the inning will continue now for left-handed batting first baseman Ike Davis. It's bad luck for Nick Massett there. Well, now Ramon Hernandez is going to come out and visit with Massett. I mean, this game is clearly Massett's game. To win, to lose, or continue to the next inning. Nobody getting loose in that Reds bullpen. They've already used Herrera, Lincoln, Rhodes, and Cordero in front of them. The Mets have only used four pitchers in this game tonight. Perez, Mejia, Nieve, and Feliciano. Here's a pitch to Davis. Breaking ball, strike one. Davis, one of four, hit a line drive that was misplayed into a two base error by Stubbs, and he scored in the second. Has grounded to Phillips, doubled down the right field line, and struck out against Cordero in the ninth. Boy, he was hunting up a piece of cheese right there. Strike two. And Mass is not giving him a sniff of it. Of course, for a little while anyway, everybody that Ike Davis sees will be the first time that he has seen him. And that is a case here for Davis against Nick Massett. The 0-2. What a play by Hernandez. That's what happens when you try to throw the breast breaking ball or splitter of your life. Just get your body in front of a Ramon perfect mechanics that time. Two on, two out, two two game in the eleventh. Struck him out swinging. Boy, that's nasty stuff by Massey. Let's come to bat bottom of the eleventh. Fernandez, a pinch hitter, and then Drew Stubbs do up. We're still tied at two. And now the fifth pitcher used tonight is Manny Acosta, pitching in his fifth game so far for the Mets. He was called up on the 21st of April from their Triple-A team at Buffalo, New York. And worked an inning and a third that very night against the Cubs, allowed three runs. He was claimed off waivers from Atlanta at the end of spring training.
Just turned 29 a couple of days ago to Acosta. Spent three years in Atlanta, or parts of three years in Atlanta. Was in 36 games last year. Ramon Hernandez shows play and takes strike one. Lance Nix. He is in the on-deck circle. And we're back for Nick Massett, who goes two innings tonight. Strikes out three, allows a couple of hits, no walks, no runs. Well done tonight by Massett. Didn't like that call, or whether he's upset with himself for taking the pitch. Well, they have shown us some pretty good arms out of this Mets bullpen, though, from a standpoint of throwing hard with velocity. Well, both bullpens have been dynamite tonight. In fact, neither pen is allowed to run. All the runs in this game coming against the starters. Oliver Perez, six innings, six hits, two runs earned. Mike Leak, six innings, four hits, two runs, one earned. Herrera, Lincoln Rhodes, Cordero, Massive covering five innings. Uh, five hits and no runs. Whereas the trio of Mejia, Nieve, and Feliciano, four innings, three hits, no runs. A couple of strikeouts and a walk. Red Bull Penn has not walked a single batter. Two and two on Hernandez. And a bouncer to the right side. One away. Of course, playing the 11th inning is like it's a walk in the park for these New York Mets. Because as many of you may remember, back on a Saturday, April the 17th in St. Louis this year, the Mets played a 20-inning game and beat the Cardinals 2-1. to one. Now Lance Nix. One out, nobody on in the 11th. Ball one. 20 innings. Did you ever play a game that long? No. Obviously, there were people playing all out of position. They had position players pitching. They had pitchers out in the outfield. But to walk away and lose that ball game must give you a real empty feeling. back to that game and the Mets had lost the night before that Friday night losing to Chris Carpenter to go to three and seven on the year when they won that 20 inning game they lost the next game against St. Louis but then went 11 and one over the next 12 games including that eight game winning streak that was snapped over the weekend against the Phillies two and two not a Knicks Each team with a pair of runs, each team with nine hits. Reds have left 11. The Mets have stranded seven runners. High fly ball. Get up, Did Knicks get enough get of this? Up. Fran court to the wall, and he cannot get it. Reds win on the home run by Lance Nix in the bottom of the 11th inning. And for the eighth time this year, the Reds have won in their final at bat, a 3-2 final.
his career game ending home run for Lance Nix. So in the bottom of the 11th inning, the pinch hit home run by Nix in a 3 2 win. I'll tell you what, never get tired of seeing that celebration at home plate. The bullpen did a great job to keep this team in the ball game, and you keep running them up there until someone becomes a hero tonight, Lance Nix. A long night of baseball here tonight. Better than three hours and 30 minutes, but certainly well worth the wait. As the Reds come away, three two victors, and they pull their record back to 500 on the year. Oh, uh, you know what? You climb a little bit, you fall back, and then you climb two more steps forward. And another great outing by Mike Leake set it all up. Great bullpen work, some nifty defense we saw along the way, and finally. That long ball was for a while there. I wasn't sure it was going to be deep enough to get on out of here. I barely made it. But the Reds are winners indeed. And it's time now for Reds Live. Let's send it downstairs to Jim Day. 